Welcome to Nadal and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Prime Minister the Honourable Kamala Prasad Vissasa describes the budget as a people-centred one. The recent success at the London 2012 Olympics continues to reap positive rewards for sport and the Minister of Health believes his ministry's budgetary allocation is enough to ensure the health sector delivers. Thank you for joining us. This year's $58.4 billion fiscal package is being described as this country's largest but also most people-centered budget. So says Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamla Passat Bissasa. The theme of the 2012-2013 fiscal package was stimulating growth, generating prosperity. The budget was a mix of measures aimed at balancing the boosting of the economy with reducing excessive expenditure. There were incentives to foster an increase in home ownership, an increase in salary for special reserve police, cheaper access to security cameras for homes and businesses, an overall 50% increase in NIS benefits payments, and the promise of closure on the CLECO HCU situation within the next 12 months. These are just some of the measures outlined in the budget, and Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bassassa says she thinks this budget represents the People's Partnership Principles. I think it represents far more than our previous two budgets, uh, the heart of what the partnership philosophy is about. Because you would see it, uh, every sector will benefit from this. Um, every uh, sectoral uh, groupings in terms of ministries, but in terms of citizens as well, at every level, our citizens will be impacted in a beneficial manner. So I, I, I am very, very pleased with the budget. We all worked very hard. It's a team effort, as Minister Hawaii said, but I think his special skills um, clearly showed in the crafting and the framing of this budget. She adds that some of the issues addressed in the budget stood out to her as they were issues which she feels passionately about. Um, putting to rest once and for all the, the disquiet with respect to the fallout from the CLECO issue, um, whilst at the same time allowing us to deal with uh, the vulnerable, at the same time uh, making provision for human capital development, making a substantial uh, uh, provision for the fight against crime and national security would have seen those issues would have gotten about five billion. I'm sure Minister Warner will be very happy. I'm smiling. He asked for four billion, and oh, it is about a five billion allocation totally. The largest slice of the budget you would see went into uh, human capital training. Um, again, that is a very important area if we are to grow our, our human resources in the country to, to give us the competitive advantages we need to be world performers. Um, there's another area I was very, very keen on, and it is the removal of VAT, as you know, it's very close to my heart. Mrs. Persad Bassassa insists the budget is one which benefits every echelon of society. So here we see a budget that is clearly uh, people-centered, I've termed it the people's budget, will help the poor man and the not-so-poor man. We will see uh, middle-income persons benefiting from the housing uh, allowances. We will see the construction boom that we need to stimulate the economy, to grow the economy, to create the jobs. We have seen already we have reached a level of full employment where you have a as defined by the economists, a 4% is a, a level of full employment. So I'm very, very pleased with the budget. The task before us now will be really how do we uh, to move forward to implementation. The 2012-2013 budget has been presented to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And it's a budget that our Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bassessa, is describing as a people's budget. With an increase in disability grants, a focus on providing increased housing for citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, lower food costs and a moratorium on construction in the Northern Range, a factor that has been cited as a cause for flooding in Northern Trinidad and Tobago, the 2012-2013 budget is definitely a budget that seeks to address the concerns of the ordinary folk, the average man and woman in Trinidad and Tobago. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The Finance Minister says his budget proposals for the fiscal year 2012-2013 is one that will see sustained competitiveness among local businesses. He was speaking at the annual post-budget forum hosted by the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce, where he says such measures will ensure continuous economic growth. Finance Minister Larry Hawaii came in for high praise mere hours after delivering his $58 billion package. This as members of the business sector 
gathered for an analysis of the fiscal package that is expected to generate revenue at a 2.5% annual growth. Speaking at the annual post-budget panel discussion held at the Crown Plaza Hotel, Gervais Warner, President and CEO of Neelan Massey Holdings Limited, describes the Minister's budget as a recipe for growth. I really want to thank you for setting the stage with your 2013 budget statement, stimulating growth and generating prosperity, in which you said, we shall seek to deepen the involvement and partnership with the private sector, including through public-private partnerships. Representing the trade union movement, Michael Anaset, President General of the Seaman and Waterfront Workers Trade Union, says Trinidad and Tobago has the potential to fast forward to higher productivity through the implementation of key resolutions. Increases in productivity will lead to improved quality of life for all who live in Trinidad and Tobago. Second, the labor movement believes we in took that productivity improvement needs to be addressed in a holistic manner and not piecemeal. The creation of a productivity culture will require strong leadership with appropriate risk taking on behalf of the government, the private sector, and the labor movement. Third, there is a shared responsibility for productivity improvement in the country and those social partners which controls the lion's share of resources have a greater responsibility to create the environment in which productivity is a natural way of life. Coordinator for the network of NGOs Hazel Brown commends the minister for setting out targeted goals as well as taking the bold step to settle outstanding wages. Settlement of the labor agreements. How many of you think that was a good one? That was a good one, all right? <laughs> um, crime, um, a goal for crime reduction, 50% over a specific period. There haven't been many occasions in which we've been told the government's gonna do something and we know what is the specific target that was to be met, so, and we could adjust the target, but at least we have something that we all know that we're working towards. This year's budget was pegged at US $80 per barrel, and it's expected that the Ministry of Finance will achieve a balanced budget by establishing a reduction in the equivalent of a minimum of 1% of GDP a year for the next four years. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Minister of Health Dr. the Honorable Fuad Khan believes his ministry's budgetary allocation is enough to ensure the health sector delivers. Speaking to the media during a post-budget interview, Dr. Khan expresses relief that his ministry will be able to do what it needs to do to properly serve the people of Trinidad and Tobago. It always is enough. To, uh, one has to work in what one gets because we have given the needs that the Health Ministry desires to the Ministry of Finance and they have allocated based on the needs and the as I say, immediate needs as well as the long-term needs. The Ministry of Health received the third largest figure for any ministry in the 2012-2013 fiscal package, a hefty $5.1 billion which Minister Khan plans to put to use improving the quality of health service available to citizens. In addition to this, Dr. Khan says strategic focus will also be placed on producing a healthier nation of people. This is in line with the government's plans to address the well-being of the citizens of this country through the expansion in health care delivery, as well as improving healthy lifestyles among our citizens. majority of that money is going to be used for recurrent, and, and recurrent expenditure that is occurring, as well as trying to develop the infrastructure. However, what I intend to do for this year is to try to com continue and to move a program of anti-obesity so we could attack the complications of the chronic non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, respiratory illnesses, and cancer. And what, they ha we have, what I'm going to push is healthy lifestyles and also at the same time dietary habits. 
The health minister explains that this will lessen the financial strain the health sector places on the economy, leaving room for monies to be allocated elsewhere. The health budget is large. It's in fact the second largest budget that we have when people are expending. So as the minister of health, not the minister of sickness, all right, I'm trying to make people healthy rather than just the only deal with sickness. And if one wants to cut that budget down to a proper size, one has to take care of the non-communicable diseases as well as push a healthy lifestyle approach, which I think is going to be done in a very big way this year. Because all that money you see will be going there will be just to taking care of the complications of the NCDs. The Ministry of Health will also, during this fiscal year, oversee the much welcome addition of several new hospitals under its control and the upgrade of current health institutions. The new hospitals will be located in Point Fortin, Arima, Sangri Grandi and Shogonas with talks to be held over the construction of a hospital in Coover with an assigned burn unit. There are also plans to address the nursing shortage with the College of Science, Technology and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago in conjunction with the University of the West Indies launching the El Dorado Academy of Nursing and Allied Health. Gregory McBurney, News 4. When we come back, budget allocations to the Ministry of Sports. Stay with us. The recent success of the London 2012 Olympics continues to reap positive rewards for sport. National sporting organizations and other stakeholders are seeing a bright future following the presentation of the 2012-2013 budget, where sport development features highly. Wayne Cunningham sat down with the Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, and got his thoughts on the fiscal plans. Big business is how the Minister of Finance categorized sport during his 2012-2013 budget presentation. When we visited the Ministry of Sport, the Honourable Annan Roberts was inclined to agree. Anybody who has had a history in sport, loving sport, as we do, you start in football, but you love every single sport from karting to archery to swimming to cycling. Anybody who is a true lover of sport would have had tears in their eyes listening to the Honourable Larry Hawaii, Minister of Finance reading out his budget and seeing that an entire page and a half was dedicated to sport. That sport had been removed from the leisure and recreational area, which is basically the dustbin of budgetary allocations, and moved into the business area. Going forward, the diversif diversification of the economy, ensuring that the non-energy sector encourages our growth for the next 50 years to create an industry of sport in Trinidad and Tobago, meaning not only creating sustainable jobs in coaching, in uh, sports psychology, sports science, massage therapy, physiotherapy, talent identification scouts in the education system, having student athletes and teacher coaches, but also the sport tourism thrust. Minister Roberts gave some initial breakdowns regarding areas of revenue from sport tourism. Every 10,000 visitors we get to this country could generate to our GDP approximately $120 million when it's based on just an, an average spend of 90 U.S. a day for accommodation, food, transport, entertainment and so on, and an average day of, uh, stay of six or seven days and nights. When you think about that, and our goal over the next three to five years is to move that number up to 50,000 with the advent of our sporting facilities through training camps, winter training camps, where we'll encourage NCAA Division One, Two, and Three teams in swimming, for example, an average team size is 25 athletes and five officials. So 30 people coming for an average time of two weeks, staying in our hotels, eating our food, using our transport, our taxi service, getting involved in the entertainment industry, the restaurants, the nightclubs, the, the ambience, the ecotourism, shagaramas, going up to Toko and Cedras and so on. This is going to ensure that all across the country, revenue is brought in. A push in this direction will also mean an increase in job opportunities. At 50,000 visitors for sports tourism, you will see 
an increase to the GDP bordering close on $600 million and approximately 12,000 sustainable jobs. And this does not include the tourism and the, the TT Pro League, the effect of getting it back into the communities. It already exists for about 489 jobs. We want to increase that, get the fans out, generate for the small entrepreneur, the nuts man, the, the corn soup lady, fully. So sport has moved into big business. Also Trinidad and Tobago with some of our coaches and our facilities. We want to ensure that the rest of the Caribbean can come here, utilize our tertiary education facilities, link with UE and UTT so that athletes can come here and train. The finance minister's approach to funding of sports development came in for high praise from his cabinet colleague. Our great athletes can stay here and train. So in five years, that is a vision, and it was brilliant to hear a minister of finance not only understand that, take that on board, and it's in his heart. While I would have discussed it with him, he understands and sees the viability and the value benefit for every taxpayer dollar spent in developing facilities, how we're going to generate the return. So it was indeed uh, an historic moment in Trinidad and Tobago for sport. And tell you, if I wasn't on camera just behind the minister, I might uh, wipe a tear because it's a lot of work. It's been a long time, to, time coming. We in Cunningham, News 4 Sports. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. Approximately 165 persons will be entering the field of automotive service technology under the National Energy Skills Center NESC program. The orientation ceremony took place at the NESC Center in Point Lisa, Scuva, where Minister of Tertiary Education, the Honorable Fazal Karim, urged students to always do their best. The minister also took time to congratulate the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Larry Hawaii, on the success of the 2012-2013 budget presentation. Addressing students at the NESC Orientation Ceremony 2012-2013, Minister of Tertiary Education Fazal Karim sought to congratulate and commend Minister of Finance Larry Hawaii for the presentation of the country's national budget. He told the students that Minister Hawaii, who has been in office for four months, delivered a comprehensive financial package that will guide Trinidad and Tobago in the next physical year. Let me just take this opportunity to once again congratulate the Honorable Larry Hawaii, our Minister of Finance and the Economy, who presented his first by the People's Partnership third budget speech. And what I described to the media yesterday as a very comprehensive and wide-ranging budget 2012-2013. The minister in the finance ministry and other members of the diplomatic corps were also on top of his congratulatory list. And I want to take this opportunity to ask you to join with me in congratulating Mr. Hawaii, but also our two ministers in the Ministry of Finance, Minister Indira Singh and Minister Bharat, for a job well done. The National Energy Skills Centre is a non-profit foundation established in 1997 by the government of Trinidad and Tobago in partnership with major industrial enterprises. The minister says NESC's training prepares graduates for employment in the construction and maintenance trades across all industry in Trinidad and Tobago. The president and members of staff for their dedication and commitment for ensuring that the flag of NESC flies not only successfully in Trinidad and Tobago, but in other parts of the world and other parts of the Caribbean soon to be. I ask you to congratulate the chairman, members of the board and staff of the NESC. Minister Karim says NESC is to be recognized as the premier provider of quality training and a powerful force of the transformation of the nation's workforce. This will lead to trainees in the attainment of national developmental goals through the provision of extraordinary skills training services. As we speak, while the hall is filled, I was just looking through the windows, the uh, blocks here. Buses are still bringing in students. And this says something good about the future of Trinidad and Tobago. 
As a matter of fact, let me also say, while there may be some who are prophets of doom and gloom, I wish to repeat the words of the Minister of Finance yesterday when he spoke on the section on human capital development. And he said that the government assistance for tertiary expenses, the GATE program, is going to be expanded. While the company was originally established to meet the needs of the energy sector, it now offers multi-sector training, opening doors for graduates to a variety of employment opportunities. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable Winston Dukaran has returned from the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The minister reiterated Trinidad and Tobago's advocacy for new dialogue and diplomacy within the United Nations while delivering the country's statement. Foreign Affairs correspondent Gideon Hanuman Singh reports. Impacted the family of nations within the UN, like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the troubling crisis in Syria. The Council must uphold its sacred mandate under the Charter and ensures that all sides involved in that conflict are made to account for the actions which have caused tremendous human suffering and continue to threaten international peace and security. He again petitioned members of the General Assembly to support the Trinidad and Tobago CARICOM proposed arms trade treaty that advocates clearly defined roles for women who are the major victims of gun-related crimes. We deeply regret the failure of the UN Diplomatic Conference on the Arms Trade Treaty, despite the support of an overwhelming majority. This is a reflection of the refusal of a few states to agree to an instrument which will prevent the diversion of arms to the illegal market. Time, the minister noted, is running out for the realization of the Millennium Development Goals and he is prescribing a way forward beyond the 2015 deadline. We also call for fresh and bold changes and a paradigm shift in thinking in the design of the 2015 development agenda. The eyes of the world are upon us, he told the General Assembly. Any inaction on the part of member states will have dire consequences for future generations. Therefore, it is imperative to implement fresh new ideas and principled leadership in conflict resolution and sustained human development. Following the statement, the minister was greeted by staff and other Trinbegonians here in New York. From the United Nations, this is Gideon Hanumansing reporting. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Thank you for joining us.